Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive and besides me is a 2017 BMW i3. As you can see, because of the age, it's the pre-facelift model and these used to come with the business sat-nav system as standard. And they used to suffer from a very common issue where, for example, if you apply too much pressure when cleaning the screen or simply because of the age, they would develop these blemishes. It may be difficult to spot through the video at the first glance, but if I, for example, turn on the rear view camera, obviously you can see that there is a big black circle and it impedes the view. These can grow over time or more can appear. And obviously at that point, it becomes quite impractical because not only are you losing a little bit of convenience, but if you go into any of the menus on the i3, you also control some of the crucial vehicle settings through there. So obviously it makes it a bit more difficult to access. The standard solution would be to replace the entire screen, but we have a bit of a DIY solution for you. You can get the actual display panel so when we disassemble the part, it's a little bit cheaper to get just the panel itself rather than the entire assembly from BMW. First, we turn off the car and using the trim tool, we pop off the two little covers for the bolt mounting points. And with a 20 sized Torx, we can remove the bolts themselves. As you can see, it releases upwards and then we just undo the display connection cable. The rest of the process happens out of the vehicle. If you look very closely, you can actually see where the damage occurs. You can see the little yellow circle under the plastic cover there. With the screen face down, we use a T9 to undo the screws holding the plastic casing in place. And if we flip the assembly over, we now need to pry along the edge of the fascia to get all of the plastic trims off. And there are these two little tabs as well holding the actual screen in place. So those need to be released and then the screen can come out. Continuing with the disassembly, a couple more screws and gently releasing the clips along the edge again. And one more set of clips underneath. These need to be undone very similarly to the ones before. The actual panel finally lifts off. This is where you need to be really gentle, but you pull out the plastic trim securing the ribbon cable in place and use the pull tab to release the actual ribbon cable. Same thing for the one on the corner. And the logic board just sits secured by these corner clips. So with these gently pried open, it can be lifted off. With the new screen, we obviously need to be even more gentle still. So we can use some bubble wrap from the packaging to put it down gently. Don't forget which screen is which. So yeah, the new one now face down on the bubble wrap and we have to complete everything in reverse. So logic board on, and it has got these little guidance pins in each corner. So these need to be properly aligned and it just clips into place. Ribbon cables go in. So make sure that the little plastic housing is released. So there is somewhere for the ribbon to go. And you may feel a subtle click. That means it's all the way in and then it can be secured with the actual clip. Let's move on to the next one. Great. Now the metal shell goes back on. So just make sure that it's correctly aligned with the mounting holes, which you can see here. And go all around the edges to secure all of the clips around the perimeter. Note that the new screen already comes with this metal bezel pre-attached. So all you need to do is snap it in place all in one go. Before putting everything back together, this is a good stage to test that the screen is working as it should. The cable can be just plugged in and you see that all works fine. No initialization or coding needed. It just works right out of the box. Yeah, and that's how the camera should look. Nice and clear. So back out we go to reassemble all of the trims back together. And yeah, with those Torx screws in place, we can move on to the plastics. So the screen snaps into the plastic backing. Remember, there are these two clips, one on either side. And the most satisfying part, removing the protection film. This needs to be done before the front bezel clips over the display. And the last two remaining screws are put back in place. So final stage, plugging everything in. The screen just slides onto the arm, holding it in place. The two big screws can be put back into place to secure the screen. 
and important is to remember that the plastic covers have little cutouts in them so make sure to align those and just push firmly into place one final test working as it should as you can see nothing too complicated and definitely something you could do at home especially if you're a little bit handy it's a bit different to your other automotive repairs because it's much much finer you don't have any heavy tools but if you follow the video you should have no problems likewise we will also have a full guide with pictures in detail so you can follow along and have the instructions on your phone for example to recap this solution costs just over 100 pounds whereas if you went the official bmw route the entire assembly is over 2000 pounds so it's a massive saving and even if you shop for some second hand examples then you are still looking at hundreds of pounds and obviously you are not guaranteed that they will not develop the same problem as this particular example had. To be completely transparent, from some angles there is a little bit of color shifting and cloudiness, we would say a tiny bit more compared to the BMW screen, but you're literally saving yourselves thousands of pounds. So at least in our opinion, it's definitely worth the compromise. It's still obviously very visible. You can still see all the text clearly. So it's still much better than dealing with the blobs in either way. We will leave the link to the part in the video description so feel free to check it out and follow along if you want to do the repair yourself otherwise as always thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one